Hey everyone, so uh, I'm coming at you with a video that I honestly didn't want to make. Um, mostly just because it it hits me, especially in a very particular spot in my heart. And I'm honestly just kind of angry and disheartened. And it's just, it's a, it's a brew of negative emotions that uh, I really only feel when I feel helpless. And I kind of do in this situation. I know I'm being dramatic about it. I know I'm being dramatic about this whole situation, but bear with me for a second. This actually is kind of important. Oh shit, I actually forgot to minimize these. Eh. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this thread right here that I was informed of by a good friend of mine, where it reads, uh, very important PSA. European o Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire copies have been rapidly dying en masse as of yesterday. And this tweet was made uh, May 4th, so the day I'm recording this. Back up and transfer your Pokemon and check your carts. Uh, this is developing and we need a good sample size. There's also a link to a Reset Era thread, and look, I know Reset Era isn't the best website, but in this case we honestly can kind of take their word for this. And if we scroll down here we can see another tweet that says, uh, just to clarify, this has been happening for a while already. It's suggested that you play through your games for a bit because it might be fine on boot up, but not totally okay. Here's a guide to help with backing up 3DS stuff via homebrew, and I actually will leave this exact link down in the description of this video, just because, like, I care. You know, I care about shit like this. And uh, the more people I can teach on how to actually back up their stuff properly, the better everyone's going to be. You know, the more people that have backup copies of their favorite games, the, just the more access we have to games in general. So you might be thinking like, what the fuck is causing this? Why are all these DS and 3DS games just suddenly dying for no reason? Uh, we have another person here on Twitter who is uh, clarifying that says, Nintendo switched from Flash ROM to EP ROM because it's cheaper but uh, EP-ROM or EEP-ROM doesn't last as long. All Switch games are made with this and will die out in 35 years. Do you know how fucking disheartening it is to hear that? I have made such a huge, I've made a tremendous conscious effort to obtain almost every Switch game that I care about physically because I wanted to have the games. You know, having a digital file is kind of, it, it sucks. Like, obviously you get it faster and it's more efficient and you can just play the game sooner, right? Like, I have my Monster Hunter games all digitally saved and uh, I kind of want to buy physical versions of them, but honestly, with this news, it doesn't, I don't really, I don't really feel the need to do that anymore. Like, I went out and I bought physical copies of games like Hades and Doom 64 and Mario 3D All-Stars and the fact that, like, I'm looking at these games right now and... I'm just, like, the thought, the looming thought of them just not being able to work anymore after th only 35 years is just really, really disheartening to me. I've been playing the same Nintendo 64 since 1997. All of the games that I have out there in my collection, for the most part, are games that I owned in my childhood. And, yeah, they're definitely older games, and... They're made with a different sort of uh, architecture. Like they switched from Flash ROM to EP ROM. So Flash ROM was used on things like the NES cards, Super NES cards, uh, fucking N64, stuff like that. And here we actually have another post here that actually kind of clarifies that a little bit. Since the DS, Nintendo's been using Flash ROM. So Flash where you can only write once. I'll be honest for a second, DS and 3DS cards will die. Now probably not supposed to die this quick, but they will die within the next few decades. Let's continue scrolling down the, the, the thread. I heard the Switch carts are more robust, so this might not happen as fast as Flash ROM does. Uh, I said the next few decades, but I was being safe. It's possible DS carts have already started dying by now. You can see in the shot all these DS games that I have up here. I got back into collecting DS games. Like, I just got back into it. I've been trying to get a bunch of the games that I've had as a kid, but it have since ended up losing because those carts are so fucking tiny. To learn that my efforts are... I don't want to use the word wasted, but kind of wasted it's just it sucks you know i am a huge 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 advocate of game preservation because it seems like no one cares you know um obviously fans do i mean we're going on this whole tirade about you know how their pokemon cartridges aren't working anymore but you know a lot of these games like i'm looking up at some of the games that i have up there and some of them for sure are going to stick around for a long time, you know, New Super Mario Brothers and 
you know, Tetris DS and Mario 64 DS is kind of, I don't even know if that's going to be around anymore. Um, but I'm looking at other games up there, like Picross 3D. Who the fuck owns Picross 3D? Hang on. Who made this game? How Laboratories? I believe this game came out on the Wii U, so I think we're safe on this one. This is a great DS game, by the way. But not all of these games are safe, you know? Nintendo is only going to bring out so many of these classic games. I mean, it's absolutely blatant with the release of 3D All-Stars, where they just skipped over Galaxy 2. A lot of people like Galaxy 2, and for them to just skip over it is... <sighs> kind of a slap in the face, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of Galaxy 2, or Galaxy in general. I think they're fine games, but they just don't hold up as well as Sunshine or 64 or even Odyssey. Or even 3D World, honestly. 3D World fucking slaps, holy shit. But like I said, Nintendo's not gonna care about every single game that released on their platform. You might have one of your favorite DS games of all time just... Poof, gone. It goes away forever, and you can never play it ever again. And to be fair, this is gonna happen eventually with NES, Super NES, and N64 games. And this is eventually gonna happen with my precious GameCube library. The fact of the matter is that these, these games mean a lot to me, and I want them to be preserved forever. So I'm making more of a conscious effort to actually back my games up. You know, the second a new Switch model comes out, I'm going to uh, mod this one that you can see right here. Uh, I'm gonna mod it, I'm gonna slap homebrew on it, I'm gonna start dumping all my games, both physical and digital. Nintendo obviously doesn't give a shit. Right? And why would they? <sighs> the sad truth about the video game industry is that they don't see their games as art. They see it as products. You know? Why would Charmin keep a backup copy of their latest toilet paper rolls? You know? Doesn't make sense. You know? Why would Ford keep a backup of every single car they've ever made? But they're not products. At least not to me. They're art. Even if even if it's Call of Duty Black Ops on DS. Honestly, this copy of Black Ops on DS still has a, a special meaning to me, you know? This reminds me of the time I went to the Nintendo World Store in New York City for the first time. And honestly, it was kind of magical, you know? I've been to game stores, and I've been to plenty of places where I can buy games as a kid, but... You know, growing up with these games and these consoles and a bunch of Nintendo stuff for so long now, uh, I've never seen a store that had everything. And Nintendo World did, you know? It even had the fucking uh, Game Boy that survived an actual bombing raid. And that was actually really cool to see. I thought, I thought that was a really neat piece of history. Um, and that's honestly the point. It's history. Try to preserve your games. I'm definitely going to be focusing more on that in the future just because it really does matter to me, you know? I want to continue Dolphin for Dummies, because there's a, there's a lot about Dolphin that I just did not go over. And I, I just want to make more of a conscious effort on this channel to explain how game preservation works, why it's important, and how you can do it yourself at home. Because I want you guys watching this to have the knowledge to tackle this problem. The more of us who actually care about this kind of thing that we have working on this and backing up our games, the better it is for everybody. You know, one guy having one backup of one game, yeah, that's important, but a thousand people with a thousand different backups of the same game, infinitely better. You know, even 10 people with 10 different backups of the same game, that's still infinitely better than one person. Let's say you watched Dolphin for Dummies. I mean, fuck, a lot of you really did. That's, that video's got like, what, 2,500 views at this point? <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, or you watched Emulators Are Special, in which I made a, a huge, huge point about uh, cartridges and discs are just going to stop working. If you watched either of those videos and you cared enough to actually go out and start backing up your games yourself, please, please let me know. Uh, or if you've just happened to stumble upon this video and you care just as much as I do, shoot a comment down below. I would actually love to talk to you about this. You know, games are... Games are more than just a product. They're art, and a lot of these games mean a lot to me. You know? I can point to nearly every single game up on that shelf, and I can tell you a memory that I have attached to that game in particular. You know, not all of them, obviously, but... There's certainly a few notable examples. Maybe if you guys want that, I can do that. I can start talking about some of these games and what they actually mean to me. 
Maybe I'll be haha -ha, relatable 100. Maybe I'll start actually getting some fucking subscribers. I'm kidding. You guys are all awesome. Go in the description. There will be links to certain things that you would want. I'll have a link to Dolphin for Dummies. I'll have a link to uh, the link that I showed earlier to start dumping 3DS games. I'll uh, try to provide as many resources as I can for those of you who want to back up certain games. Like, let's here, let's do this then. Uh, if you care about backing up like PS3 games or PS2 games, let me know. Let me know in the comments. I will find a source for you. I will reply to your comment with the link to the resource that I found and also put it in the description of this video. Just because I want as much knowledge to be contained in this one place as possible. So everyone who has any kind of background in gaming and actually cares about this shit can take the steps that they can to preserve their own games. I fucking love Nintendo's games, and I have physical copies of a lot of them, but I need to start backing up more. I need, I need to build my own NAS, I need to have a bunch more storage, I need to get all these files, I need to back them up on my personal stuff, because I want to be able to revisit these games. A lot of us do. You know, I'm, I'm making all this effort to play these games as best as I can in their original forms. You know, I got a fucking 32-inch CRT out there that I can play with uh, N64 or Super Nintendo or GameCube or Wii. Who knows how long that shit's gonna stay alive. But it's worth the effort. I think it's worth the effort in the end. The future of gaming is not going to be CRTs and GameCubes. It's going to be emulators and our computers at home. This video is, uh kind of a mess because uh, I just got so upset at the recent news. <laughs> I said I was going to end this video like so long ago, but I just can't stop talking about it because fuck. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just back up your games. Have a good night, everybody. All right. Just back up your games, please.